Hey, I actually kept my promise about being on time. Chapter 367 left off with shadowy entities rising from the ground, which I initially thought to be apostles. But it turns out they're the same type of masses of evil spirits that were encountered at the Tower of Conviction. We see Guts alone, surrounded by them chanting the word sacrifice, as he realizes that he's separated from everyone. We then cut to Danan, Isidro, Isma, and Serpico, also surrounded by the evil spirits. Isidro's first instinct is to protect Isma, so credit where credit is due, Isidro does seem to be slowly maturing. As he starts to fight, however, it appears that he's about to be overwhelmed, only for our boy Skull Knight to ride in and save the day once again. Just more evidence that deep down, SK absolutely retained his humanity and empathy, despite him trying to convince both himself and everyone around him of the contrary. I do find it kind of strange that Serpico didn't do anything. He probably doesn't have his wind sword or cloak with him, but the fact that he didn't do anything at all while his friends were being attacked is still really odd. I don't think this is an oversight, though I guess it is a possibility since Mira is no longer at the helm. What I think is more likely though is that he's having some kind of mental health crisis, because now that Farnese is becoming more and more self-sufficient, he's losing the only purpose he's ever had in life. And he just doesn't really care about anything anymore. That's really the only thing I can think of to explain this really strange lack of action. Isma immediately recognizes that Skullamania is a good guy, and her instincts do seem to be pretty on point. SK tells everyone that there's too many of them for him to be able to protect everyone, so he tells them to run. The ominous skeleton also implies that Elfhelm may not be all sunshine and rainbows because he says that the island is sustained thanks to these evil spirits and that they are the true lords of the island. It seems that these entities were not brought by Griffith after all. It was only he and Zod who came to the island. The entities were part of the island all along, and Griffith's arrival just seems to have woken them up. Despite being told to run, Isidro tells Skeleman that he is going to stay and fight. This gives the ardent believer in causality reason to question whether or not the undying will of man to resist is factored into the law of causality, or if it may be possible to change it. I can't help but think about that time Skull Knight saved Luca back in the Tower of Conviction. He also told her to run away, only for her to run right back into the mouth of hell because she knew her friends were in danger. I don't know if you know this, but keeping the will to fight and go on no matter how desperate the situation is kind of the main theme of Berserk. So Skull Knight witnessing normal human beings giving a big middle finger to fate might be giving him a little bit of hope that the law of causality might not be all it's cracked up to be. The news that shit is hitting the fan then reaches Roderick. Apparently he and his men were warned by the mermaids to leave, but of course it's not going to be that easy. Magnifico is being a drunk piece of shit as Roderick tries to figure out his next course of action. It's then that the fish start leaping from the ocean as a massive amorphous blob of evil spirits starts rising from the water. One of Roderick's sailors somehow mistakes the blobs for fairies and thinks it would just be a great idea to give one of the evil spirits a nice little pat on the head. Turns out it was not a great idea as he immediately gets just straight up all mud. Roderick and his men are then too surrounded, and that's when he realizes that they aren't the only ones in danger, as he thinks of his prospective wife, Farnese. Now back to Guts. It looks like he's starting to lose all hope as he drops to his knees with a look of absolute powerlessness on his face when he sees Zod flying off with Casca and Griffith. The look on Guts' face as he sees the love of his life being carried away by a doppelganger of her rapist and his worst enemy is absolutely soul-crushing. We then get a first person view from Guts as he reaches out in vain. The island then continues to split apart as a giant gnarled tree sprouts from the ground. As Puck watches on alongside the text, an endless darkness swallows everything. I have no idea what's going on with this evil tree and all these evil spirits lying dormant under the island. I really get the idea that Elfhelm is hiding some kind of really fucked up secret. Perhaps Griffith didn't even cause this whole thing in the first place. Maybe the kid showed up knowing something bad was going to happen and he just wanted to protect his mom. Because, of course, Griffith didn't show up in his own form, he first showed up as Moon Unit. Things are getting pretty weird. 
Yes, Griffith showed up, and yes, he was looking pretty evil at first, but he hasn't actually done anything bad. Guts went all in with his attacks, but Griffith didn't retaliate in any way. All of Guts' sword slashes went right through him, but it's not like he's totally incorporeal since he was able to lift Casca. So it really seems that Griffith probably could have killed Guts at any time, but he chose not to. If anything, it looks like protecting Casca from the encroaching evil is his primary goal here. An evil that it turns out is a part of the island itself and not an invading army from Griffith. There definitely isn't enough evidence to say for sure, but the idea of this Griffith turning on Femto because of Moon Unit's love for his mother is seeming more and more plausible. Also, if the Griffith on Earth does turn against Femto and Zod remains loyal to the earthly Griffith, my original theory may actually come to fruition too. As usual, I need to temper my speculation as there really isn't enough information yet, but things are definitely getting interesting. The next chapter is due to drop in about a month, so make sure to subscribe if you want to continue this journey through Berserk with me. I'd also love to hear where you guys think the story may be headed if you think I'm, like, way off. Likes are also greatly appreciated, and that's about it. Thanks for watching.